So many times when we ask, we say, ask people to receive Jesus into their heart, they say it. But I wonder in my heart, have they really got this revelation in their heart that gee, who Jesus is? And have they got a revelation now? God is now my Father. There's something missing in so much of our salvation. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We will reveal God as a Father. It's a wonderful thing. You know, that's what Jesus tried so much to impress upon his disciples. You don't have to be worried. I know the world is a very insecure place to live in. And that's why I'm sending the Holy Spirit to reveal God as your Father. And I believe that many of you sitting here you need to get that revelation from God as he's your dad who cares for you. It's because of that that he said, don't be anxious. Your heavenly father knows what you have need of before you ask him. Turn with me to Matthew chapter six. Matthew chapter six. Verse eight, verse seven. Don't pray like the non-Christians with their meaningless repetition. They think they will be heard because of their many words. They think they'll be heard because they prayed for so long. The prophets of Baal prayed for so long, nothing happened. Elijah prayed for 30 seconds and the fire came. The non-Christian thinks, if I pray for a long time, I'll be heard. He said, don't be like that. Just repeating, repeating certain things, meaningless repetition. Because, don't be like them, because, verse 8, your father knows what you need before you ask him. The next time you pray, think of this verse, Matthew 6, 8. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is what the Holy Spirit tells me. You're, he's your dad. He knows what you need before you ask him. Therefore what? Therefore, for this reason, verse 25, I say don't be anxious. Connect these two verses together. Read verse 8 and 25 together. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. Therefore, for this reason, don't be anxious. What is the request that is uppermost in your heart today? Let's be practical. Let's do some homework. I think in many of your hearts, there's an uppermost request. Some, usually some earthly thing. Some uppermost request. Shall we do a little homework today? While we're sitting here. Do you believe that your father knows what you need before you ask him? Therefore, don't be anxious. Look at the birds of the air, verse 26. They don't sow, they don't reap, they don't gather into barn, yet your father feeds them. Do you believe that you're more value than those birds? Like that little poem which says, one bird talks to another and says, why are these human beings so anxious and worried? And the other bird says, maybe they don't have a heavenly father like we have. Maybe that's why they're so anxious and worried. We're okay. <laughs> Think of a bird talking like that to another. Is it because they saw you? Did they talk like that? And he says, look at all the flowers, the lilies in the field, verse 28. They don't work hard, yet they get, they're clothed by the Father. And even Solomon in all his glory, verse 29, was not clothed like this. If God... The Father so clothes the grass of the field. O oh, men of little faith, won't he do that for you? I believe the greatest need in the days to come is security. To know God as our Father. Very, very important. Even when everybody leaves you. Remember Jesus once told his disciples, yeah, you've stood by me all this time, but a time is coming, John 16, verse 32. This is just before they went to the Garden of Gethsemane. In John 16, 32, he said, 
the hour is coming and it has already come you will all run away to your own home john 16:32 and you leave me alone but i am not alone my father is with me i remember when we started preaching the truths we preach in cfc way back in 75 the lord asked me will you continue to stand for these truths if everybody leaves you i said yes sure i'd come to know god as my father and didn't matter to me now whether people stood with me or how many people came to our church it never bothered me one bit because one man with god is a majority remember this my brothers and sisters if you're lonely in some situation some of you come from non christian homes and i really can sympathize with the struggle you have your parents are non christians and you feel you're alone there in the house you're not alone if god is with you you're a majority that everybody be against you you're a majority this is the thing that gave boldness to the apostles to face lions and spears and thomas who came to india was speared to death how did they how did thomas come all alone to india how did he have that boldness he knew the father that's the thing i believe that is the great need the first person of the trinity the father we need to know him intimately that will bring security Now we go to the second person of the trinity Jesus Christ. Jesus said the Holy Spirit John 16 he will take of mine verse 14 and show it to you. He will take of Jesus and show it to you. He'll not only reveal the father that's great like he, re- he cries out daddy but then he reveals Jesus to me. He reveals the second person of the trinity to me. He takes of Jesus and shows me how Jesus was. And then I see how Jesus was on this earth. And the Holy Spirit shows me. Jesus came in a body like yours. He was made like you in everything except that he had no sin in him. But he was capable of being tempted just like you. So now I have a revelation of Jesus. This is the other thing we need to see. We need to see God is our father that delivers us from our orphan syndrome and insecurity. I know him as dad. I don't have to be anxious anymore. You know, like whatever problems that may be in a home, a little 2-year-old child is not bothered. Whatever problem, think of your little 1-year-old child or 2-year-old You think that child is bothered about all the problems you father and mother are worrying about uh, you have to your landlord has asked you to vacate the house or you're losing your job and you don't know what the two year old is happy and playing and says I'm not bothered about all these things you go to him and say do you know your dad's le- leaving losing his job he don't doesn't have another job he doesn't have much in his bank account he says just leave me alone I want to play I don't care <laughs> you go and talk to my dad about all that I'm not interested Imagine my brothers and sisters living on earth like that. Is it possible? Yes it is. It's not that we don't care for our responsibilities, we do what we can, but the anxiety part is taken out of us. And it'll make you work much better, make you do everything in love much better if anxiety can be taken out of our system. Insecurity, anxiety. It's a wonderful thing to know God is a father and then he you see that's the beginning we know him as a child to know god as a father and then as we grow up the holy spirit says now you need to take responsibility and learn to live like jesus and immediately another question comes anxiety how in the world can i live like jesus i'm such a rotten old sinner i can be forgiven by him but to live like him impossible we say and yet john at the age of 95 says in 1 John 2:6 the one who says he abides in Christ must walk as Jesus walked 
I remember reading the testimony of John Wesley, one of the greatest saints that Christianity has seen. He said, when I read that verse, the one who says he abides in him ought to walk as he walked, I didn't think of it as a burden. I thought of it as a fantastic possibility. Hey! I mean, he didn't say hey, I'm just adding that. <laughs> But I can walk like Jesus. How do you look at that verse? Oh, a burden. Oh, I have to walk like Jesus or a possibility. Imagine a wretch like me who's been saved from the gutter, having messed up my life and hurt God in so many ways. Now I can walk as the Son of God walked on the earth. In every area I can live on earth in the same way Jesus lived, with a dignity, without fear. Jesus was never afraid. Oh, I may get cancer. You think he was living in that type of fear? There are a lot of sickness going around. I may catch it. I don't know what will happen. And many people are dying. I may die. Never. I can live like Jesus. This is the Christianity we preach in CFC. This is why they call us a heret heretics and false teachers. Of course the devil wants you to believe it's a false teaching. Because he wants you to live like an orphan, insecure, fighting, quarreling all your life. That's the best way to the devil to turn people away from God, from the truth. Tell them, oh that's heresy, that's all wrong teaching. That's the way he makes people turn away from the truth. I'm not surprised. You think the devil wants you to walk as Jesus walked? Tell me, who will be most upset if you start walking as Jesus walked from tomorrow onwards? You think God will be upset? Oh, he started walking as Jesus walked. <laughs> I'll tell you who will be upset. It's the devil. Then who's trying to stop you from even attempting it? Who's trying to stop you from believing that it is possible? If the Bible says, so it must be possible. Will you ask your child to put a 500 ton weight on his head and walk? No. If you as an evil father or mother will not burden your children with commands they cannot keep, how in the world can God tell me to walk as Jesus walked if it's not possible? It's a fantastic possibility.